What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna go over five things you should not be doing in your automatic transmission vehicle. Now I'm in my 2020 Toyota Supra. It has a conventional torque converter automatic transmission. So first and foremost, we're gonna be talking about when you're parking on a hill, don't park the car on the transmission. Now what do I mean by that? So I'm on a hill right now, let me come to a stop. I'm gonna put the car into park and take my foot off the brake. You notice we rolled back just a little bit. Basically, when you put your car into park, there's a pin that locks the transmission and that locks the vehicle from moving. So right now, I am basically putting the weight of the vehicle on that pin on the inside of the transmission. Now when I go into drive, I feel the car jerk just a little bit and now I can obviously move. Now back when I was in college, I had a Hyundai Genesis Coupe which had a normal automatic like this, but the actual shifter was like most cars. You pull it over, down into drive. This car has more of an electronic shifter so it's a little bit different, but on the normal transmissions like I had in the Genesis, my brother's Toyota Tacoma, if you park it on the transmission like that and it rolls back like that, I've always found going back into drive when I get back into it, I have to pull it really hard it clunks back into gear and it just sounds like something's gonna break. I never liked that. So my recommendation when you come to a stop on a hill, put it in park, go ahead and now put on your parking brake and then let off your brake. So now the weight of the car is actually on the parking brake, the transmission pin that is holding this vehicle into park isn't really absorbing all that weight. Then when you get back in your car, put your foot on the brake, disengage the brake, put it into drive, and I don't know if the camera's gonna pick that up, but there was no jerk at all going back into drive, and I can go. So that is definitely something I would recommend when you're on a hill, whether it's uphill or downhill, just don't park on the transmission, keep your foot on the brake, put the brake on, then put it in park, and then you're good to go. So next up on the list, we're gonna talk about shifting your vehicle. When you do that, make sure you come to a complete stop. So I'm coming to a complete stop. Now I can go into reverse. Now I can go ahead and back up a little bit. Now when I wanna go to drive, stop all the way put it into drive, and then proceed. Now, in all honesty, my dad stalled his Toyota 4Runner a few years ago. The reason was he didn't stop. He was going to reverse from drive, and I'm not gonna demonstrate that in my car, but he did it very quickly while he was still slightly moving forward. He went ahead and put it in reverse and gave it some gas, and that was just too much of a reverse action, and it literally stalled the engine. And the way an automatic transmission works, you have your engine and your transmission, and the way they are connected in a conventional torque converter transmission is called a torque converter. So basically that is one piece connected to the engine, one piece connected to the transmission, and they can spin freely, but inside this piece, there is a hydraulic pump basically in the inside of it with bands to hold it tight. So when there is enough pressure from the engine spinning this side of the torque converter, it pressurizes the center, it locks together, and then the engine connects to the transmission and spins the transmission, spinning your wheels. So for number three on that list, that is should you put your car into neutral when coming to a stop? Now a lot of people think that might get better gas mileage, it's less stress on the transmission doing that. In all honesty, for the most part, it doesn't really matter. There's really no need to put it in neutral when you're at a stop. The torque converter, like we just talked about, the pump in the center that has pressure when you're accelerating to lock both sides of it together to connect the engine and the transmission. When there's not really any pressure on it, they can spin freely. That's basically you in drive at a standstill. Right now, we're idling around 600 RPM, and a lot of cars, if you push it into neutral while still at a standstill, the tack actually goes up just a little bit. In this car, it doesn't seem to change it at all. So with this car and actually going from drive to neutral, I don't feel any difference. The car doesn't shake. There's absolutely no difference in feeling of the car. And then also as far as gas mileage goes, this car has the engine start stop feature. So when you are at a standstill, it will shut off the engine most of the time when you're in traffic. So on top of all that, some people think that if you're in neutral, you're gonna be putting less stress on the transmission and torque converter while idling. When you accelerate your vehicle and actually apply throttle to the car, that is actually putting more stress on everything than just idling. So it's not like the transmission can't handle some stress, so putting it in neutral when you are parked, it doesn't make a difference because you put more stress on it in other ways. So for number four on the list, a lot of people think coasting in neutral when going downhill will save you gas mileage. But right now, I'm gonna be coasting around 20 miles an hour in drive. My miles per hour gauge actually just shot all the way up over 90. So as of now, I'm getting like 100 miles per gallon. So now as far as coasting downhill in neutral, we're gonna do the same exact test, getting up about 20 miles an hour, putting it into neutral, and as you can see, the gas mileage gauge is still at that 100 miles per hour or 100 miles per gallon. You're not gonna be getting any better or worse fuel economy if you're coasting in neutral or in drive. 
But here's the issue. This is kind of a safety issue because right now I'm kind of out of control of the car. I have no acceleration. That's just me revving it. All I have is my brakes. So in all honesty, when you're driving, it is not recommended to be coasting down a big hill in neutral. So it's not gonna do you any good doing that. Leave it in drive. The car actually has computers that are smart enough to know to cut fuel if you are not using any gas. So for the fifth thing on the list, we're gonna be talking about launching your car. Now, if you have an automatic sports car like this car, you probably wanna go fast sometimes. Some people will do a thing called neutral dropping it. I don't know if I can do it in a more modern car like this one, but basically that is keeping it in neutral, keeping the revs a little bit higher, and then then slamming into drive and taking off. Basically what you're doing, and as we talked about earlier with how the torque converter works, one side is spinning very, very fast as you're in neutral spinning quickly, and the other is not moving. When you put it into drive, the pressure inside instantly connects, and that's just a ton of pressure on the inside of that torque converter. The bands that hold everything together is not really recommended, and that's putting a little bit of extra stress on your transmission. So don't neutral drop it, and I am not going to even demonstrate that in my car because that is stupid. So if you're gonna launch your automatic car, the best way to do it, as I will demonstrate in one second, you wanna put your foot on the brake, just hold yourself and just build the revs a little bit, maybe like 1500, you can feel the car lurching a little bit, and then let off the brake. All right, it's way too cold. <laughs> It is 30 degrees out, so my tires are spinning. But that's how you want to launch your automatic. That way, you're building up a little bit of pressure inside of the torque converter. That way, as soon as you let off the brake and you can actually accelerate, there's no lag of engaging the transmission or anything like that. So that's the best way to launch a car. It's fun to do. You know, Don't do it every single day because it does cause a little bit of stress on the car. So that's about going to wrap up today's video, going over five things you should not be doing in your automatic transmission vehicle. Now, these are honestly very, very common transmission. They make a ton of them in the country, most commonly sold when we get here. They are pretty robust, pretty reliable, so it's not like they're not going to last 100,000 miles with no issues. But given when they do go wrong, it is an expensive transmission to fix, so you definitely want to treat it with care. And those are just some tips for maximum longevity. So hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Give it a huge thumbs up, smash that subscribe button. Stay tuned for plenty more content to come, and we'll see you guys in the next video.